Okay, okay, okay. I'm super excited to be presenting to you today from zero to Kajabi hero and how you can build, grow, and scale without complicated funnels. As I said, my name is David Nips, co-founder of Rain Companies and She Reigns Creative. And in this presentation, I want to show you the exact step-by-step -step system that we use when we're working with our six, seven, and eight-figure clients to grow and scale their business or if we're working with somebody brand new who's looking to add another level of their business through an educational product, or potentially they're thinking about launching a new type of product, this is the process that we go through that takes away the complication, the complexity, the craziness of how marketing can sometimes feel, especially in a digital world where there's ideas and there's strategies, there's webinars, there's challenges, there's all these things. How can we complicate it down and just focus on a great part of great product a great traffic system and having the messaging in place to be able to take somebody who's hearing about you for the first time to becoming a paying customer. And I'm really, really excited to be sharing this with you today because I think you're going to all get a ton of value out of it. So does this look familiar to anybody? And if it does, I know we're virtual, but go ahead and raise your hand, even though you're the only one who's there or let us know in the comments. Does this look like a familiar thing that you've seen before? You know, you see them in the group, you take out your phone, you're taking a picture, you're like, Oh, like what's your email sequence like? You know, what's the timing? You know, what's this? And you build out these really, really complex funnels. But the truth is, is that when your sales process and your marketing process is complex and confusing to you, imagine how confusing it is to the end user. And I'm not saying that having different automations and sequences in place shouldn't happen. But oftentimes what happens is we dive into things like this without having any reasoning of what it is and why we're doing it. And oftentimes it leads to just a really complex funnel that's not delivering on the sales numbers that we need. So the more simple funnel that we like to use is actually way more simple than a lot of you would think. Step number one is we need a traffic source. If you don't have traffic, it doesn't matter how good your product is. Imagine having, you have this beautiful store which has incredible clothing at great prices. It's a great shopping experience, great customer service. You have this amazing store, but when you walk by the storefront, the signs kind of hanging off, or maybe there's just no sign at all. It's just like wall, but when you go past that wall, there's an incredible storefront back there that people would love, but there's just a wall. I talked to so many course creators where I'm, they're telling me about their product. I'm like, this is amazing, right? You gotta help so many people, and I say, well, what are you doing for marketing? And they say, well, I post on social media, you know? Okay, well, how many, what's your, what's your engagement? Like very small, right? So they have this incredible product, but there's no, there's no traffic, right? So you need to have this traffic source. But then the second thing is there needs to be very clear messaging. And by messaging, I mean not just telling people about the features of your course, but making sure that people are very clear on what the benefits of your course are, right? Like people aren't looking to add more work to their life. And they don't really care if your course is 23 hours long of content or if it's three hours long of content. What they wanna know is you can take them from the current position that they're in, whether that's their health, it's their wealth, it's their relationships, there's something in their life that they're looking for help with and it's probably causing pain inside of them. And they want to trust and believe that you're going to take them on the journey to that other side of that end goal that they want on the other side of it, right? And through that path, they want to believe that you're the one that can get them there with the cheapest, the fastest, and with as little friction as possible in between. Right? That's what they want to know. And that's what your sales page and your marketing materials have to deploy. And if they believe that, and if you have the right price point, it's going to lead to a purchase. This is the simple funnel that you need in your business, especially for a lot of you that are just getting started and you're looking to make your first five figures in your course business, this is the funnel to focus on. So here's the thing. If I came up to you and I said, hey there, insert your name. I want to sell you my Ferrari. Uh, it's a, it's worth $100,000. I have a Ferrari a lot, you know, all that. And I want to sell it to you for $20,000. Yep. For a lot of you, even if you didn't have $20,000 available to purchase that car, you would find any way, shape, or form to be able to get that car that's there. You're gonna go take out a bank loan, you're gonna go put it on a credit card, you're gonna go borrow money from family and friends, you're gonna do what it takes, right? But the thing is, when it comes to your course, we wanna have that same feeling for your customers. Where when they're coming, they're like, okay, there's this program, it's $249 to sign up for it, but 
I believe that I'm gonna get so much value out of this, right? The return on investment in my life that I'm going to get from this is so much worth, worth so much more to me, you know, that it's a no brainer. I'm gonna find any way, shape or form to purchase this program or coaching program that I'm looking at here. The truth is complexity does not equate to effectiveness. Effectiveness comes from a great message and a great offer that's clearly put in front of your audience consistently. I'm gonna talk more about that and I'm actually gonna share the first four steps of our process of going through this in a moment here. There's more steps, but transparently we only have a little bit of time here. So I wanna give you the first core four. They're gonna get you off of and get you off moving and in the right direction. Also, contrary to popular beliefs, intricate marketing funnels do not automatically guarantee success. Success lies in the strategic alignment of your marketing tactics and understanding your target audience. I'm gonna share a, a, an exercise that I like to use in a couple of slides from now that really just helps you imagine and putting yourself in the shoes of your customer and it's going to help you sell, I guarantee it. Okay, so step number one of the process is an irresistible offer. And here's a couple of things that I like to think about when I'm developing my irresistible offer. Number one is addressing customer pain points. The example that I like to use here is put yourselves in the shoes of your customer. They're sleeping, 2.30 in the morning, the wind ruffles against the, the side of the house and they wake up and they, what's that thing that they're thinking about? Because everything in the middle of the night just feels 10 times worse, right? So what's that thing that they're thinking about and now they can't fall back asleep and now they're worried and now they're thinking about you know, all of the ripple effect of things that could happen, is it? Whatever it might be, that's your pain point, right? Imagine your customer like right here, like they're waking up and they just have those terrors going through. What's that in relation to your product? Number two is what is your unique value proposition? What sets you apart from other alternatives in the market? Because I'm sure there's other people selling courses in your niche. What makes you different? Okay, a couple of ideas. Number one is the, the number of people that you've helped previously. I was talking to somebody who has a stylist course where she's helping women learn how to um, dress and style themselves to be able to go out to that next party, right? A, a more elaborate version of that. And one of the things that she could say is that she's helped over 10,000 women improve and overhaul their style, right? If you're talking to some, if you're selling a nutrition and a fitness product, maybe you've gone through your own transformation and you've lost 120 pounds. Well, you can say, hey, listen, I've lost 120 pounds for myself and I'm going to share you the exact steps that I took to be able to drop them and how you might be able to do it for yourself too. What makes you unique from everybody else in the marketplace that your potential customer can be choosing from? Number three is over deliver on value. This goes back to my Lamborghini Ferrari example. Right? How can you make sure that when somebody's signing up for your program, they're not paying $50 and getting $50 of value, but they're paying $50 and they're getting $1,000 of value. And it's not just value because you put value to that, but it's value that they can psychologically imagine in the back of their head that this is so much of a priceless return for me. Number three, or number four, clear and compelling messaging. I always like to say, if I put your messaging and your product in front of a fifth grader, would they understand what it is, how it works, and what the transformation is going to be? If they can't, it's probably too complex. You wanna make sure you have a clear and compelling message around your offer. It's extremely important. And number five is limited time or scarcity element. What will happen to me if I don't take action on this right now? What's going to be the effect? What's going to happen in the future? And number two is, why should I take action right now? Are you running a sale? Is there limited availability? You know, What's that thing that's gonna get me to get out of my chair, stand up and go take action on this right away? Number two is a clear path to progress. Has anybody here ever heard of Dave Ramsey and the financial peace guru guy who has Financial Peace University? Some of you are probably raising your hand, some of you might not have heard of him, but I'll give it to you really quick in a nutshell. So Dave Ramsey has a, a program called Financial Peace University where he helps people who are typically struggling in debt, they don't, they're not living on a budget, that maybe they're living paycheck to paycheck. He helps people go from that pain, which you can imagine there's a ton of pain in that, go to financial peace is what he calls it. And that's where you, know, you have paid off debt, you have an emergency fund, you have, you're able to take a vacation without stressing, you're able to live and give the way that you want to in your life and be able to have that, that vision for the future, right? But for a lot of people, going from $20,000 in credit card debt, 
living paycheck to paycheck, you know, really feeling overwhelmed to having your mortgage paid off, having no debt, having money in the bank. That's a big leap to go, right? And if he came to his people and said, listen, here's what you got to do. Pay off your debt. You got to save your money. You have to live on a budget. You have to do all of these things. You just have to do them, right? That's overwhelming. Like, I'm going to start that. I'm going to be overwhelmed. And I'm just going to stop, right? But what he does is he says, I have what's called the baby steps, which is where you go one step at a time through the progress to get to baby step seven, which is the end of the journey. Step number one is save $1,000. That's all you have to do. Save $1,000. Once you do that, then you go to step number two, which is pay off all of your consumer debt, your car, all of your, your car debt, your credit cards, things of that nature. And he actually tells you exactly the process to go through that. Once you finish that, then you go on to step number three, which is saving up an emergency fund, and it, and it goes on and on and on. With a lot of the courses that I've seen, you log into the back end of the member center, and there's just like a hodgepodge of information, right? And it's kind of hard to go through. This will hurt you in two ways. Number one is when you're marketing your course, if you can't show it like it's a treasure map, like, hey, listen, this is the steps that you're going to take to go through the journey. And if you follow the steps, I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to give you everything you need to be able to do them. As long as you can trust me, you're going to get to the end. You're going to get to that treasure at the end of the journey. And number two is when people log into your course, you want customer success. You want testimonials. You want people winning with it. So when, they're, when you have that map in place, people are going to be more likely to actually stay accountable and moving through it. It outlines, as I said here, the logical sequence of topics, activities, and assessments, reducing confusion, and increasing learning efficiency. And you're also creating milestones and achievements because who, who, else, who else out there loves to have a notepad where you write out your list of to-dos for the day and that feeling of just like crossing it off? Best feeling in the world. How can you create that for your course where people can cross off that item off their list and move on to the next stage of the journey? It's going to help you immensely. Okay, number three is sales generator page, also known as landing page, also known as sales page. Couple of things you wanna make sure that you have on here when you're designing this inside of Kajabi. Number one is compelling headline. Most of the time when people go to a sales page, they will stick around for the first two to three seconds to see if they understand what they're looking at. If they understand, they'll keep reading. If they don't, they're gonna click off. We call it the grunt test in marketing. So you wanna make sure that within three to five seconds, it's very clear of what you offer, how it works, and the transformation that you're creating. It's fast, and it has to be in the headline. Number two is that engaging story. Tell the story of what the, your product does and how it creates a transformation in somebody's life. Identify the problem and present the solution, and make sure that you have tons of social proof, testimonials, videos, People who've gone through the program have had success. One of the things that I love to do is actually just like take a screenshot of people who've sent messages saying that how great it is because people will believe screenshots and videos more than they will just using like the Kajabi testimonial slider because they believe it a lot more. Clear course description. Highlight the features and the benefits. This is where you put that treasure map in place. And you can actually map it out like a treasure map where you're like, hey, listen, step number one is this. Step number two is this. Step number three is this. Step number four is this. Showing them the journey of what's going to happen. And if you go to uh, Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace one, like I talked about earlier, you can see how they map it out there. They do a really good job, and they're a multi, multi-million dollar business that's done this. Call to action, risk reversal. What happens if they get 30 days in and they don't feel like they're getting value from the program? Offer a money-back guarantee, potentially with certain stipulations. Truth is, one, 2%, 3% max, if you have a good program, will ask for a refund. And if more than that do, that's going to give you a very easy way of getting feedback to improve your program for future customers. Scarcity and urgency, like I said, what are the things that uh, they have to do now to, or what's gonna happen if they don't take action, right? And then also, why should they take action right now? Is there a launch sale? Is there limited opportunity for it? Create that urgency of getting people excited. Right now, there is a Taylor Swift tour happening. It's, I think it's called the Eras tour, Era Tour. And there is extreme levels of scarcity and urgency. And you might not be able to create urgency like that, but you can get, you can, you know, model some of the things that they're doing where when people are logging in on Ticketmaster to get their ticket sales or they're sitting at the line outside of the, the concert to be able to get in, how can you create that level of urgency? Clear pricing and payment options, 
frequently asked questions and visuals and multimedia. You need this sales generator page because this is going to be that thing that's going to be able to get sales on autopilot. You don't want to have to talk to every customer and you don't want to have to hustle and grind out every sale. Create that sales generator page is going to make it happen. So to recap where we're at so far, step number one is you need an irresistible offer. Always start here. Start with like, what's that end goal thing that I'm going to solve for them? What makes me different? And how can I make sure that I'm over delivering on the value and the transformation that I'm going to provide? Number two is clear path to progress. This is going to show people the journey of where they're going from A to Z. And what this is also going to do is give them confidence that they're going to be able to follow through one. Because oftentimes people don't worry that your course is going to work. They're worried that they're going to give up before they're actually able to see the end result. And this is a way of saying, hey, I'm gonna hold you accountable. I'm gonna show you the steps and there's a clear progression of things to follow. Number three, as we just spoke about, is the sales generator page, incredibly important inside of Kajabi. And number four is building brilliance in silence. This is a tough one, right? Because as creators, we love to educate, we love to teach, we love to create transformations and create impact in our students' lives. But sometimes we're building br brilliance in silence. And what this means is we have a great program, but we don't have a traffic source to it. So what I always like to say is when you're creating a course in Kajabi or whatever other program it might be, think of yourself as a teacher in the beginning where you're building out the course education, you're building out the curriculum, you're doing the things that need to happen there. Once that course is built though, you have to equally turn into the CMO, the marketer of your business. You need to turn into an expert marketer. Because here's what you need to create. This storefront right here is your course. This is your sales page. But there needs to be that magnet that's pulling people into it and getting their attention. Okay. Right now, on average, people see 10,000 ads every single day. Whether that's on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever it might be. Whether that's uh, reading the newspaper, which not many people do, but some do. Getting postcards in the mail, billboards on the side of the road. You know, anywhere you go, you're, gonna, you're sitting in an Uber, you're going to get an ad. Anywhere you go, people are, are looking to get attention. So if I'm seeing 10,000 ads in a day and I'm interacting with, let's say on the high end, let's say 100 of them. That means 100 divided by 10,000 means that you're interacting with 0.01, so 1% of ads a day. And that's if you're interacting with 100. So how can you make sure that your marketing is that 1% of everyone else? And there's tons of great ways to get traffic, okay? Step number one is to think about where are my customers might spending time, right? If you're looking to go after you know, moms with young children, it might be Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube. You know, these are platforms to go to. If you're looking to target maybe people 55 plus, Facebook, right? If you're looking to target business professionals, uh, high-end people in their career, podcasting and YouTube, because they don't have time for social media, right? Where are these people spending their time? A, figure out that. Number two is, what is your unique way of marketing yourself? For some people, it's, that they want to, um, they love to speak, right? Getting on video is tough, but a podcast would be great for them. For some people, it's social media because they love to type, right? You can type out long posts. For some people, it is video, and that's YouTube. It's, it's creating that short form content. Figure out what your unique way of creating content is, and then go in on that. Just because somebody else is crushing it with a podcast, that might not be your way of communicating, and that might not be where your customer lives, but if you create Short form video, that's where your sweet spot is, right? You can test things, but you have to pick a, pro uh, a platform and you have to stay consistent with it. For me, my favorite source of traffic and the one that's worked for our clients at scale is Facebook and Instagram ads. But as many of you know, Facebook and Instagram ads is a good way to also lose money. So how do you make sure that you actually win with ads? Well, there's a couple things that I wanna share today. Number one, the money is in the hook, okay? When somebody's scrolling through social media and you get their attention for that quick little bit of time, how can we make sure that we're hooking them in within seconds, right? In that opening copy. Number two, the money is also in the creative. I don't like using stock photography or video. I want you to either create a video 
or to create really eye-catching images that's going to get somebody to stop their scroll and want to continue reading. Educate on the problem, but also don't offend people. You don't want to tell somebody that they're uh, overweight and that they're unhealthy and then they're going to die young. But there is ways to educate them on the problem without offending them, right? Tracking. How can you make sure that when somebody clicks your ad, goes to Kajabi and then purchases, there's tracking in place that's going to tell Facebook how much you paid to generate that sale and what ad they saw to come to it. Social proof. Showcasing other people's success in your paid advertising or any of your marketing is critical. And last but not least is A-B testing and iterations. I like to sometimes compare marketing and advertising to baseball, where if there's a baseball player who hits 300, right, three out of 10, they're considered a great player, right? But three out of 10 in traditional schooling is actually very poor. I always like to say, consider marketing to be like baseball, where if you're hitting a three out of 10, you're still on your way to success. I'm super grateful that you spent this time with me today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the summit speakers that are going to be spending time. There is some links to freebies down below where you can get more detailed information on the process that I'm sharing here and also connect with me deeper. You can find me on Instagram at david.nips. I'm looking forward to connecting with many of you soon and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.